I met her on a hill. She was walking someone's dog. I was having a moment with a cow, trying to make it wear my hat and telling it a poem. I didn't notice her stealthily approaching. Suddenly the cool air was inexplicably suffused with warmth. I felt a stab of foreboding. Shoot down my own spine as well as down the spine of my associate, the bovine. Whatever we were sharing, it was no longer alone time, spooky. Sheepish as the flock of sheep grazing in the distance, I turned and was fixed with a gaze, the likes of which I had never witnessed. Her face was an intricate maze through which I stumbled like a love-starved drunk man, chasing the mirage of a blissful embrace, tripping on the shoestrings of his libidinous haste. Bathed in bashful silence, I stood, like an actor in a romance by William Shakespeare who's misplaced his script. Can I have your number? It was the bravest thing I ever said. She handed me a business card and skipped down the hillside, nimble as a springbok. Vibrant as some tiger fur. I hope she's into hip-hop. I'd like to write some rhymes for her. Okay, what's this card say? Cat sitter, dog walker, mobile, landline, lady Shere Khan. Mm. AKA the Bengalese tigress, fair enough. Picture's kind of fruity. And what's this? No fixed municipality, a figment of reality, implicitly imaginary. Chick seems kind of groovy. But hold on a sec, sister of depravity lives for immorality. This is slightly spooky. Well, you will always be the beautifulest girl I knew, with your canine protrusions of a pearl like you. Truly, you strike all of my unignited flames, but love is kind of strange with a spooky little girl like you. I text her at five to midnight, saying I couldn't sleep for the embarrassment. But it was nice to make acquaintances. Her response was instantaneous, she called me up and asked me would I like to go with her and see an anime movie about a magical sprite. I should have said no, I had some plans for that night, but there was never any option but to say it all right. My first date passed more or less without incident. She was wearing a stripy orange and black dress. I told her she looked dazzling, easily as striking as any Hollywood actress. She nodded and said thanks, took me by one of my horribly wet hands His palms had long since fallen prey to the predatory sogginess of shuddily suppressed angst And led me to our allocated seats Numbers 26 and 7 row D, I saw she rustled up her own bag of tasty treats By the way, the film we saw was Princess Mononoke But it hadn't started yet At this stage, the advertisement that was in effect was deviously tempting me with boxes of Malteser spheres I asked if she wanted any popcorn, ice cream, a Harry bow, perhaps a curly whirly for your teeth to pierce She shakes her head, I'm not really into sweeties cheers And to see the gaze accompanying the phrase I feel the stress yet refreshed like I'm bathing in a stream of tears So what's in the goodie bag? Nothing much, I brought a couple sneaky beers and then she clears her throat and it sounds like a tethered dragon angered by the people's spears A small pause, pointedly descends from two feet to all fours I feel the full feral force of some sort of crude poignancy I can't fathom For some reason I'm rattled now, spooked, besieged by peripheral hyena packs of creeping fears She says I hope you're not squeamish it's no big deal, I just brought along a couple roasted hamsters and three or four deep fried beaver ears, what does it mean? Initially I squirm like a squid on a chopping board, praying to some coral reef deity, spare me my flesh. I am too young to be a starter on a specials board of foreign cuisine, but then it's like quick as a flash, the chef coughs, the knife lands, a weight lifts, I feel oddly serene. We lock optics, my heart rate skyrockets. And I think to myself, beavers be damned, I have never seen such sweet veneers, I'm lost in a dream. She's a mighty shepherdess wielding a machete, and I am he, the shabby chic sheep she shears, the gondola to her Venetian queen who steers. In the end I shrug and say, I guess it makes a change to not be hitting on a vegan fierce. Well, yours will always be the velvetiest fur I stroke. There will never be a purer pedigree 
I'm a lorry in a one-way lane and you're ahead of me, waiting at the gateway to my destiny. Lately I've been making lots of phone calls to all my favourite women, sketching out the gist of my affliction, fishing for prescriptions, swimming like a shoal of lost fishes in the rivers of their wisdom. She always keeps me guessing, I never seem to know what she is thinking. And if a tomcat looks at her, it's for sure her little eye will be a winking Suggestively, what's that about? I get confused and never know where I stand But then she smiles and holds my hand Mum, she's quite a lady But love is kind of crazy with a spooky little girl like her Basically, in summary, she's gorgeous and she's stunning and she's great But I'm afraid I've got more than I can comfortably stomach on my plate I'm truly not sure that I am capable of mustering up the courage it'd take To fire up the bus of my escape They say there's 50 ways to leave your lover at the gate But what if it's too late for me to extricate Myself from the kestrel claw clutches of my fate In the end our strange quandary came to a head As all quandaries do we were laying stark naked in bed Chain smoking straight cigarettes Stubbornly refusing to shake off and shed the layers of stale sweat saline solution, swaddling our union like basilisk snakeskins, flaky as a dragonfly cadaver's decayed wings, ears ringing with the banshee like wailings of our respective inner monologues, heads spinning like propellers or the cogs of clocks, afraid and aghast and agog we watch. Our combined self fracturing and splintering and splitting into two like the cloud the helicopter chops. I doubt I'll ever know how the hell a person is supposed to feel when that which was constant stops. When a life size masterpiece portrait of two souls dissolves and regresses into nothing but a cardboard box filled with scrap paper dot the dot. She told me our love is beautiful but wrong like a summer's eve sky thronged with flying dodo in ostrich flocks. As I recall, I responded with some sombre nods. I couldn't talk as my whole throat was clogged with frogs, although in hindsight I suppose they were probably sobs. Slowly now she lifts up her paw to my nose, blows me a kiss and adoringly strokes. As always her nails are as poison dart sharp as the thorns on the stalk of a rose, she sighs forlorn. Dolores, morose, eyes purr imploringly, talk to me, Tobes. I try, but I'm still really struggling to force down these forkfuls of pesky primordial toads. Presently, her nails dig deeper. My lifeblood is drawn from me gently. I thrust out my tongue, and as it catches the sticky red water that flows, she remorselessly probes. How does it taste? I don't know, it tastes warm, metallic, it makes me feel nauseous, it's gross. Exactly. There, that's the home truth, as harsh as the squawking of crows That's the whole reason our story has drawn to a close It murders me to say it, but ours is a fatalistic parable I love you, but our natures aren't the vaguest bit compatible I have tried and failed to feel ashamed of what I am When our souls converse, it's like a house made of hay and flames The spectacle is radiant and magical but the structural integrity of us is non-existent Our love is unsustainably flammable I said I'm not sure that I can leave you after all that we have been through She said you better otherwise I'm gonna fucking eat you We laughed but it was scary We laughed but it was true We laughed but we were wary of angering the harbingers of heartbreak that flew like vultures in the darkness We laughed cause it was literally the only thing we still had heart enough to do you will always be the beautifulest girl I knew. There will never be a purer pedigree. I'm a lorry in a one-way lane and you're ahead of me, waiting at the gateway to my destiny. But sometimes you have to kick the vehicle of your spirit into reverse so that you can chase a new trajectory. So this one goes out to Lady S. Khan, a.k.a. the Bengalese feral beast. She gave me both the ailment and the remedy. And for each of those, I'll be grateful till my skeleton is tucked up and sleeping like a baby in the cemetery. And yeah, it's a real shame it wasn't meant to be. But nothing's ever wasted. If you question me, we did a pretty darn good job with regards to the savouring of the flavours of our ecstasy. 
I only hope, I only hope, I only hope she knows I'll forever be indebted to the time I spent cradled in the polar bear embrace of her fidelity. I only hope, I only hope occasionally I'll feature as a friend in a daydream or a memory of hers, perhaps triggered by a fragrance or a melody. I only hope, I only hope she'll always feel powerful and beautiful and brave when she remembers me. I only hope she'll always feel powerful and beautiful and brave when she remembers me. <laughs>